Thank you so much. Uh, welcome, everyone. It's nice to just kind of have my very first conference as an international one. So I'm quite excited for that. And I'm really looking forward to at least kind of uh, sharing some knowledge that I have uh, gained over the past one or two years about cloud and uh, Kubernetes itself, and also about the developmental knowledge that I've gave, gained so far with my internship at Nirmata. So a little bit about me. Uh, I'm a software engineering intern at Nirmata, and currently I'm also a CSE senior. I'm still studying in college, and uh, I'm in the final year right now, uh, pursuing my computer science degree from KR Mangalam University. And I have also been uh, the Linux, uh, Linux Foundation's LFX mentee uh, at the cluster API provider AWS project, uh, which falls under the Kubernetes SIG cluster lifecycle. And I'm also the creator and the maintainer of Kiberno AWS adapter, which was just recently released just around the time of uh, AWS reInvent. And uh, I've also been the former secretary of Computer Society of India, KRMU chapter. So let's get started. Well, when we talk about pod security itself, uh, we know what security is, but when it's about pod security, there are different levels uh, of complexities when it comes to containers, right? So if we need to uh, access specific host services, for example, Linux services, uh, we might not want to because it might be very risky for any uh, unintentional access being provided to any kind of image. So please let me know if anybody has any kind of questions, if any terminology gets complex uh, because it's a beginner's talk, and I'll be very happy to even uh, address your questions midway. So in Kubernetes, pod security, uh, it kind of ensures that your Kubernetes pods are safe and secure from any security-specific misconfigurations. And these security issues might arise, such as the example that I just gave. You might not want any host processes to be accessed by uh, Kubernetes pods. Uh, so that is just one example. And uh, it also led to the creation of pod security standards. So, uh, and pod security standards were basically uh, derived from the experience that was gained by implementing pod security policies. And pod security policies were actually introduced in the Kubernetes v1.3. But now they have been deprecated in the v uh, version 1.21. And finally, they were entirely removed from the version 1.25 of Kubernetes. But this removal did not just come as is. Uh, there was also a pod security admission controller, which was introduced in Kubernetes v1.25. And it essentially just kind of uh, enforces whatever standards we have right now, pod security standards. And it creates policies out of those and only deals with those standards as uh, specific like uh, enforcements within your Kubernetes clusters, right? Um, but now, what are pod security standards? So as I just mentioned, there are specific standards. And these have been divided into three different kind of policies that are pretty much generalized for our use case, right? So there might be a privileged uh, standard, which is extremely not recommended because you basically provide all the access to your resources using this, uh, uh, this mode, privileged mode. And then there is the baseline mode. So baseline mode is uh, essentially the kind of policies, the kind of standards that are enforced uh, whenever you create any uh, generic uh, Kubernetes pod, right? So if you just use uh, the kubectl run command, uh, then you are basically creating pods which are following the standard uh, baseline uh, profile of pod security standards. And then there is restricted mode. Uh, it is actually heavily restricted. And uh, we will kind of see what these look like when it comes to the actual Kubernetes implementation later on. Um, but now let's see what's a pod security admission controller. So an admission controller in Kubernetes essentially means that uh, whenever there is any kind of a resource admission within the cluster itself, uh, there might be a few webhooks uh, uh, which would be looking at the resources, right? So these webhooks might be able to either validate whatever the payload was uh, when the resource was kind of uh, getting into the cluster itself. And then they, with, we can basically make some decisions on the basis of 
whatever payload uh, consists, right? So for example, um, if let's say there is a specific mode, then the webhook will see, uh, for, uh, so before, before getting to the mode itself, we also have namespaces, so pod security standards, in case of uh, pod security uh, admission controller itself is applied on a namespace scope, right? So the way to implement this is by adding a label to the namespace itself. And this, uh, essentially, it's the same format as I've mentioned over here. Uh, so it would be pod-security.kubernetes.io slash mode. And this mode has to be anything uh, between enforce or audit or warn. So these are the only acceptable values for the mode. And then in the case of level, we would mention uh, which kind of pod security standards we want to apply for that entire namespace. So you cannot apply these standards for specific pods, right? You will have to apply this on the entire namespace. So all the pods, all the containers that are present in that entire namespace would be affected by this uh, pod security standard. So be very careful about whatever uh, standards you're using um, and what, pod is, uh, what pods uh, those standards are going to affect. And again, these will be privileged, baseline, or restricted. Now, since the title itself mentions Kiverno, uh, I'm not sure how many of you, uh, I mean, this is entirely voluntarily, uh, how many of you have heard about Kiverno before? Anybody? Okay, I can see four or five hands. That's great. It's even a better session. Uh, so Kiverno in Greek means to govern. Now, what we mean by governance in Kubernetes is uh, that we are essentially having control over what resources are making way into our Kubernetes clusters, right? And then we can make decisions on the basis of those resource specifications. And by this implementation, it just means that it's a policy engine. So we can write policies for Kubernetes in Kiverno. And these are entirely Kubernetes native resources, which means that if you want to uh, deploy a, a Kiverno policy in a Kubernetes cluster, you just have to write YAML. There's no other language required. And that is one of the coolest things about Kiverno. Uh, there are other implementations for like policy enforcement in uh, uh, Kubernetes, uh, such as uh, OPA Gatekeeper. But uh, as you might have heard of it, it also requires the usage of uh, Rego language that is very specific to OPA. Uh, but OPA definitely has a lot of different use cases. It's not just uh, restricted to Kubernetes. But if it comes to the ease of use, Kiverno is definitely a step ahead of it uh, because it just requires YAML. There's nothing else. And you can essentially uh, audit or enforce the policies so by audit, we mean that we will have an entire log of whatever um, resource has tried to make their way into the cluster. And uh, we also have like three different kind of rules. And, and I forgot to mention enforce. Enforce essentially just uh, entirely rejects the admission uh, of a resource in the cluster if it does not follow whatever Kiverno policy we have written. Okay, so it's very restrictive. If you have just one specification that is misconfigured in your, for example, Kubernetes pod, then it will just not allow the creation of that pod itself. Well, now there are three types of rules. Actually, there are four type, uh, types of rules now. Um, there is validate rule in which we kind of just validate whether or not a specific resource that's trying to make the way into the cluster is uh, valid, as the name itself specifies. Uh, if it's not valid, then you have the option of either just auditing this event in the form of cluster policy or policy reports uh, in your Kubernetes cluster itself, or you can also enforce the policy and you can instantly make a decision whether this has to get in the cluster or does not. Then there is a mutate rule. Mutate rule is pretty cool, actually. Uh, if, let's say, uh, you have any kind of resource that you forcefully want to modify on the spot as, it, as and when it tries to make the way into the cluster, you can simply modify its specification, whatever specification you want, right? And uh, on the basis of that payload itself, whatever it's getting from the Kubernetes API server, it will be able to make that decision just in the way of like uh, whatever policy you define. Uh, and then there is a generate resource rule. You can also generate resources, for example, if there is a specific resource that requires the creation of a secret, of a Kubernetes secret. You can just kind of see if this is that specific resource, and you can generate 
a new resource or a new secret on the basis of that uh, Kubernetes resource, which you're trying to validate. And then, yeah, the fourth rule is uh, the image verification rule, which is uh, still currently in progress, but it's pretty much uh, about to like be standardized, uh, be, get, in, get in the way of its standard usage across the community. Uh, it is essentially able to verify uh, any uh, OCI images and attestations uh, that are associated with the Kubernetes pod. So you can also verify whether or not this is an image that you want to be associated with a pod or any kind of, let's say, for even a deployment. So one of the cool things about Kiverno is that you also don't need to worry about whether you have to write, if you're trying to write, about, write a rule about pod or a deployment, you can use autogen controllers, which are very specific to Kiverno itself, and it will create specific auto-generated rules for whatever uh, pod controllers we have. So if you create a rule for a pod, then it will be automatically applied to, for example, replica sets or uh, deployments. So that's one, one cool thing about Kiverno. So let's just try to understand the architecture of Kiverno. Uh, at a very high level, uh, just uh, we, we, as I've already told that an admission controller uh, keeps an eye on, on whatever resource is getting into the cluster. So on the basis of that payload, the admission webhook, Kiverno has an admission webhook. Actually, there are multiple webhooks in Kiverno. Uh, but essentially, in Kubernetes, there are two kinds of uh, webhooks, which are the mutating webhook and the validating webhook. The validating webhook takes care of any kind of validation uh, that is to be performed on the resources. And the mutating webhook takes care of like modifications in that resource. Uh, and uh, in this case, uh, the admission controller, the Kiverno admission controller, it utilizes the uh, Kubernetes webhooks uh, to kind of make such decisions. And on the basis of that, it is able to uh, create chain, uh, RCRs or policies or generate requests, uh, so on and so forth. So this is like a very high level architecture of it. You don't really need to understand all of this if you just want to implement any kind of Kiverno policy. You can just start right away if you want to implement any such policy in your clusters today itself without any such knowledge. All you need to know about is uh, the, the kind of specification that we use in creating a Kiverno policy. So here we have a really uh, standard sample policy. Uh, I'm not sure if you're, I hope everybody is able to see the content here. Um, so let's try to understand what we have here step by step. The API version for a Kiverno policy is just kiverno.io slash v1. And the kind would be cluster policy in this case, although we have two kinds of policies in Kiverno. One is a cluster policy, and the other is just policy, which refers to any namespace policy. So we can create policies that are applicable throughout the entire cluster, or we can also create policies that are applicable to just specific namespaces. And in that case, we won't be using a cluster policy, but instead, just a policy. And the API version would be the same in that case as well. Next, we have the metadata. You can see a lot of different uh, annotations here. These are not at all required if you just want to try out Kiverno for the first time. These just kind of provide you with additional information about that specific policy. And uh, for example, uh, you can categorize what this specific policy uh, is related to. It's, uh, so in this case, it's a best practices policy from the Kiverno website itself. Uh, and uh, we can also provide a description if that's needed. Uh, then let's get back to uh, the actual real deal, that is the specification of a Kiverno policy. So here's what the real action happens. And this, we have a validation failure action where we have set it to audit. And in case of audit mode, uh, it will just create uh, events and policy reports for uh, any kind of events that happen, which are not really intended. Uh, then we have background mode. So background mode basically ensures that it is able to keep track of this, uh, of any previous resources that have existed in the cluster to be checked even after this policy has been applied at a later stage, right? Uh, then we have the rules that we need to define for our policy. So a policy need not contain just one rule. It can contain many rules. Uh, so in this case, th there is, that is why it is a list of rules uh, present here. So we just have one rule mentioned here, that is check for labels. And this policy just checks for the existence of this label here. 
uh, that is app.kubernetes.io slash name. As long as this label is mentioned, it's, uh, it's present in the, uh, in the metadata uh, of any pod. So you can also see that we are currently matching against all the resources that have a kind of pod. You can also mention multiple resources here. It just does not need to be a pod. It can also be a namespace. It can also be a deployment. You can mention as many resources you want in the kinds list, and it will validate all those lists, uh, all those resources for this namespace. And that's, that's basically the purpose of this policy. It's as simple as writing just plain YAML for deploying your first Kubernetes uh, Kiberno policy. Now here's a policy to restrict privileged pods. Now this is very specific to pod security itself. Um, so just looking at the pattern here, we can see that uh, there are specific specifications of that pod. Uh, in this case, if there, are, so this, this is something new for you, I guess. Uh, it's a syntax that is specific to Kiverno, although that is the only syntax you would need to understand about Kiverno. Uh, it's called an anchor, and there are only about five or six of these anchors, which are used for comparing the values or like validating the values uh, within fields and their children fields in, uh, in any kind of like a specification. So in this case, it's just trying to see if any init container exists, then proceed to its child elements. And if the child elements exist, uh, named as security context, then look for its children as well. And if privileged, uh, this privileged field uh, exists, then it needs to be false. That's a, that is basically the idea behind this entire syntax. So this is just one syntax that is equality syntax. There are multiple different, like four or five different syntaxes or uh, anchors uh, as they are known in terms of Kiverno. There are multiple anchors, five or six of them. It's very easy to implement. And on the basis of such log logical decisions, you can pretty much decide what pattern any kind of Kubernetes pod in this case, uh, since we are matching against all any kind of uh, Kubernetes pods, uh, it will be validating for these specifications in that Kubernetes pod. Now, there is a new rule that is uh, implemented in Kiverno after the version 1.8 release, and this is known as the pod security validation rule. Earlier, there was no such rule that was, uh, that was dedicated towards just pod security uh, standards or pod security uh, policies. But with this rule, we are able to even make it a lot more fine-grained, a lot more granular to implement pod security standards. Because pod security standards by themselves uh, do not provide you with any such way to make any modifications in the standards that are already defined. So this is where Kiverno comes in. It also gives you the ability to kind of uh, accept, uh, make exceptions for uh, or exclusions for different control names. So what is a control name? What are the restricted fields? I will basically get you through it as well. But this is essentially the syntax of any pod security uh, rule in Kiverno. So in the pod security, uh, so the, the parent field here is the validate field, which falls under the Kiverno uh, cluster policy spec itself. And in the pod security field, we have profile, which mentions which uh, pod security standard profile we are aiming for. Uh, that needs to be enforced on, uh, on the concerned uh, resources, which are pods in our case. And we will mention which Kubernetes version are we going to validate this against. So you can also specify which version. Uh, you can make different uh, pod security standard policies uh, on the basis of different versions of Kubernetes. Then you can make uh, exceptions for different control names and uh, make exceptions for specific restricted fields in those control names. So I'm not sure, uh, so there's just one more example for this. In, this. in this example, for the same previous syntax, we have a baseline profile. This baseline profile uh, is, using, uh, is being used for all the latest Kubernetes versions. And then we are just trying to ex uh, exclude the control name for capabilities. And what these capabilities are, it's very specific to just Linux distributions. Uh, it essentially tells you what uh, host capabilities you want the system, the Kubernetes pod to have. In this case, uh, we are uh, modifying the capabilities for, uh, for this specific uh, profile, that is baseline profile. 
and we are adding, we are making modifications to the restricted field, uh, which is mentioned as uh, any containers. So this asterisk, uh, asterisk uh, represents the wildcard symbol. Uh, any any container uh, that is present uh, with a security con uh, context uh, capability, the add capability within the security context, it it is allowed to have any value such as uh, kill set GID and set UID. So these are the different values that we are making exceptions for. Apart from this, uh, every other values will be uh, excluded. Like they will be validated uh, against. And uh, so I guess it's time for a demo. I think this might be a lot of just jargon, but uh, let's let's kind of see if we are making some sense here now. So okay, this might be very small. Please let me know if you're able to see this. I think that might be good. All right. So, in fact, let me just use the terminal. That might be more appropriate. Yeah. So for the demo, I'm not using any kind cluster or minikube cluster. I'm just using an EKS cluster. There's no specific reason for that, except that my system might cry a lot for resources which it might not have right now. It happens a lot. Uh, so I'm just... These steps are something that you know you don't need to take care of. It's just uh, so that I have access to the Kubernetes cluster. All right, so there is no other resource on the system. Uh, if you want to install Kiberno, uh, there's a very beautiful documentation out there uh, on the Kiberno website itself. You can just go to the documentation and there are installation steps. In my case, I'll be specifically using uh, the Helm chart for Kiberno. Uh, yeah, so you just have to add the repository for Kiberno uh, Helm chart and you will be good to install it as well. And it seems like my system has already started crying for some reason. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, am I going? Yeah. So, let me first install Kiberno. Uh, for this, I'm using the repository that I've already added. So, I don't need to add it again. And I'm using the version 2.6.3. It's the latest stable release for Kiberno right now. And I will just use this command, and it will deal with all the stuff that I need to take care of in order to install Kiberno. Okay, it's taking some time. All right, it's done. So let's look into the Kiberno namespace itself. Uh, we will certainly have some pods uh, for Kiberno, uh, hyphen n Kiberno namespace. Yeah, it's currently in the initiating stage. And yeah, it's running now. So. Let's just try to, uh, so now that we have already installed Kiberno, first let me demonstrate how the actual pod security policies work uh, in terms of like the pod security admission controller itself. So if I want to enforce, we are not dealing with Kiberno right now, we are just using the native Kubernetes pod security uh, admission controller. If we want to enforce the admission controller right now, all we need to do is we just need to create a namespace. So in this case, let me just create a namespace called uh, baseline. And if I want to enforce pod security, uh, policy, uh, pod security admission on this, I will simply label this namespace uh, as uh, baseline. So this is the baseline profile I'm using, which uh, means that whatever the default uh, pod security standards are for kubectl run command, uh, those will be enforced here. 
So now our uh, pod has been labeled. So if I just run the nginx image uh, in the baseline uh, namespace, it won't show any kind of uh, policy violations. Uh, but let's say that if I create this, uh, this resource, which is a pod, that has a security a privileged mode enabled, basically. So privileged mode means that you will be able to access all the resources, all the host resources uh, of this uh, pod. So if I just try to apply this pod, I'm pretty sure, okay, once again, I'll just copy this. Yep. So it's not, it's telling me that the CTX demo container must not set the security context dot privileged equals true value. What we have seen right, right now is essentially the pod security admission controller. Now, if I set this to false, it should be working as good as it would previously. So if I set this to false, let's see what happens now. It should work pretty, uh, pretty fine. And it's created. So the problem with this is that it's very much uh, rigid in terms of whatever capabilities or whatever kind of standards are being enforced here. So if I just show you the pod security standards, uh, these are pretty much uh, well-defined already. Uh, you cannot customize these. Uh, if you are kind of enforcing these standards on any namespace, then they have to follow these uh, different practices. For example, in case of privileged for, uh, pods, you don't need to take care of anything. It's basically just giving uh, the key to your door uh, to any kind of thieves or stranger. That's, that's how privileged uh, it makes your uh, pods or resources. Um, but in case of baseline, it has some uh, different uh, practices or uh, values defined for the different uh, control names. So we have already seen control names in uh, Kubernetes Kiverno, pol uh, Kiverno policy specification earlier. So these are the control names that we were essentially talking about earlier. And uh, you can see that there are some restricted fields, and it's, ah, it has stopped scrolling. Yeah, all right. So it has some restricted fields, and these are the restricted fields that we have seen earlier in the Kiverno policy. And these are the allowed values, so essentially, in this control name, we are just restricting all these fields to these specified values. If there is any other value for this host process control or like uh, for these fields within any uh, uh, pod specification in Kubernetes, then only these values are allowed. And if you try to set it to true, then it will fail immediately. Uh, so this is the baseline profiles, just one control name. There are multiple control names across different uh, restricted fields. Uh, so that's why, that's why it's pretty much rigid. You cannot make any changes to these existing standards. And that's how it is implemented in Kubernetes as well. Um, but in case of Kiverno, as we mentioned, that we can make it a lot more fine-grained. So let's, let's have a look at um, what a Kiverno policy essentially looks like. Um, so here's a policy for checking the labels, as we have already seen. And uh, let me just uh, demonstrate uh, creating a pod which does not have this specified label. All right. So if I uh, create this policy, and let me also change the label name here. Uh, All right. Yeah. Here we can see the cluster policy is created. And if I try to apply, um, uh, for example, if I try to run an Nginx, um, Nginx container, let's see what it says. Uh, it's currently created. 
and uh, it is, let me see if it's an audit policy or an enforced policy. So it's an audit policy, so I must have uh, got an event for this. Come on, it's getting stuck. <laughs> it's already starting to try for resources now. Uh, get CPOL. If I try to get cluster policies now, it would say uh, that we have these cluster policies. And if I try to get uh, CPOL uh, resources now, uh, sorry. Then we could see that there are two failed resources here. And this is essentially, if I, if I even uh, if I know YAML this, then we can also see that there are these two failing resources also uh, contain this failed policy. So it's an indication that our policy has worked, uh, but it's only in audit mode right now. That's why it has not taken any action. If it was enforced, uh, then let's also see what would happen if it was enforced. Now let me create another image that is Nginx1. It has simply stopped the creation of this pod and it has shown us the error that the admission webhook has denied the request, which means your pod could not make its way to the cluster itself. Um, now let's have a look at the pod security policy that we talked about earlier. Um, so in its current state, if we don't include the commented uh, section of it right now, uh, it will work pretty much the same as the baseline profile does. So here we have the pod security rule, and in this we have specified the level of pod security, that is baseline, and then we have the version uh, that is latest. So if we apply this cluster policy, okay, oh, it's cpol2, my bad. We have created this, and it's only applied to the baseline uh, namespace. Uh, sorry. Yeah. And if I try to create the pod as earlier. Let me see if it has privileged. Let's set it to true. And, okay, let me delete. Let me first delete the pod itself. I believe I'm taking a bit more than my expected time. Uh, but now as you can see, uh, so it currently gets uh, restricted by the baseline profile. Uh, if I disable uh, the label itself, and then I try to apply the policy, then Kiverno is the one that's making the decision that this pod is not allowed in the cluster itself. So that's basically the demonstration of the pod security rule in Kiverno. There's a lot more detailed, uh, there are a lot more detailed policies out there on the Kiverno website itself. Uh, if you want to have a look at the policies, uh, then you can just go to the policies section on the Kibano website. We have tons of different policies uh, uh, uploaded over here. Those are all created by the Kibano committee community. And if we just look, have a look at it, we have 237 different uh, policies created by the community, uh, which is always going to be increasing, by the way. Uh, now let's have a look at what we have 
remaining. I'm pretty sure there's nothing else remaining for the demonstration. Yep. So this was pretty much the final point of my presentation. Thank you, arigato, and dhanyawad, everybody. OK. Thank you very much. Yep. Are there any questions? Uh, uh, oh. Thank you for a really interesting uh, presentation. Uh, hi, my name is Ken Taro. I'm from Japan. And um, yeah, actually, the, the pot security policy is a really, I think, yeah, it's a really big problem. And then uh, I was a previous company, I was a developer. And then pot security policy is, is duplicated and then, yeah, it's erased. So, uh, sorry. <laughs> my main question is the, which is uh, the best uh, uh, migration? Uh, uh, software is the is the Kiberno or uh, Open Policy Agent, or you know the cloud native service have uh, many policy uh, security services, and today I really interested in the Kiberno. <laughs> uh, I I am not hands on like yet, so I'm trying. I would I would like to try to use it, but so how do you think the Kiberno or OPA or other open open sources, which is the good one? Uh, please tell me the benefits. Services, if you know that, yeah. That's actually a really great question, and there's been a lot of debates in the past as well, and even ongoing debates. Yeah. Um, as for what is the most appropriate uh, policy engine to use, right? Mm. Uh, in case of Kiverno, it's definitely a lot more easier to use uh, when compared to OPA, uh, because nobody wants to learn anything new in order to apply what they already know. They just have to implement it in a way that is acceptable by Kubernetes itself. Right, yeah. so Kiberno just uh, utilizes those webhooks mm -hmm. that we talked about. I'm not entirely sure how OPA is implemented as a developer, so I cannot speak for the internal complications or like features that are present over there. Mm -hmm. But in case of Kiberno, I'm pretty sure uh, that as compared to other policy engines, mm -hmm. I believe that's the only only policy engine we have right now, mm -hmm. uh, which allows us to create policies in just Kubernetes native fashion. Mm -hmm. And there are also increasing use cases for Kiberno as and when the community demands. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, just as I mentioned, even the image verification rule, uh, that's again increasing, that, that's being supported by the help of Cosign also, uh, created by ChainGuard. So, we, we implement Cosign in our uh, Kiverno development, uh, just to verify the image verification as well. As for the pod security part, uh, I believe that was your question, right? Uh, for pod security, definitely we are still uh, working on making it a lot more, uh, like, appropriate to make it production ready, mm -hmm. right? In case of Kiverno. But it was just recently released. I believe it's, uh, it might need some uh, community contributions as well. Mm -hmm. I'm not entirely sure because I'm not right now on the Kiverno development team. Uh, but as for pod security standards themselves or pod security policies, it's definitely a good option mm -hmm. uh, if you want to get started with implementing pod security policies in your clusters uh, and make it a lot more like uh, you just want, you just don't want to learn new like redundant things uh, you uh, you just want to know uh, you just want to implement whatever you are already aware of right okay. so in that fashion in that sense kiverno is definitely the option to go mm -hmm. but opa and other engines might have their own features pros and cons uh, as for this uh, debate i think we already have one article here this article as well uh, was also written by me only and uh, it mentions uh, it it has actually referenced a specific talk by one of our co-maintainers, Chip Zoller, um, and also by Shooting Zhao, who is also one of the co-creators of Kiverno, and also the maintainer right now. And in that, in that talk, it's actually mentioned in the slide itself. In that talk, they have pretty much tried to bring up all the differences between uh, Kiverno and the pod security policies or the pod security admission controller as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are also different uh, comparisons present on the Nirmata website itself and also uh, on CHIP's website, Neon Mirrors as well. So you can just kind of find all the different comparisons made by someone who's more qualified as I am uh, to do that comparison. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Any other comments? No? 
okay, from me. <laughs> uh, uh, could you say anything uh, if uh, there is uh, uh, how 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 much uh, performance degradation is using uh, Kiberno? I uh, see. For, for, for example, mm -hmm. uh, if there are so, so many policies in the table, it takes, uh, it seems to take long time to look up the table. Yeah, so it's again a really good question. And there was one recent change in Kiberno made uh, by one of our create, uh, maintainers. Uh, we have basically, so earlier what was happening was we were keeping track of policy reports in just one uh, YAML file or like one uh, custom resource. That is the policy report itself. It's either policy report or the cluster policy report itself. And we were not splitting uh, those in any fashion uh, just as of recently. But now we have made some modifications in how Kiberno policy reports are implemented. And we are now splitting them. We have provided people with the ability to split policy reports per namespace. So you could have different policy reports for different namespaces as compared to like having just one single policy report and that containing all the details of whatever uh, admissions were made in the previous uh, uh, requests. So that's one optimization we have done previously. Uh, as for the performance, I think uh, there were some issues, but we have resolved most of the performance issues uh, in our previous pull requests. Um, I cannot provide an exact benchmark as I don't have any graphs to show you right now. Uh, but yeah, there have been some improvements uh, in the previous pull requests that were made on the Kiberno project, uh, at least from what I've observed uh, right now. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, so we have covered uh, everything on the agenda. So uh, let's end it here. Uh, I, I would like to express my appreciation for all speakers and uh, participants. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me.